How's it going, everyone? So we're going to continue talking farther about systems of linear equations and using matrices uh, to solve them. So far, we've talked about square matrices, two by two matrices, three by three matrices, and now we're gonna get into rectangular matrices. They don't necessarily have to be a square which means the number of unknowns and the number of equations does not have to be equal. Now to understand the material in this video, you have to be comfortable with square matrices, uh, bringing them to row echelon form and reduced row echelon form. So review that if you are not comfortable with that yet. So getting right into the material, Okay, if we recall, if we have a system of equations, for example, 3x1 plus 2x2 minus x3 equals 5, uh, 7x1 plus x2 minus 2x3 equals negative 1, and x1 plus two, uh, 3x2 minus x3 equals 2. Okay, so here we have three equations and three unknowns, and if we put it in matrix form, we get 3, 2, negative 1, and then a 5, 7, 1, negative 2, negative 1, and 1, 3, negative 1, 2. Okay, now this is called an augmented matrix because we do have that vertical line, which is representative of an equal sign, and then we have some more values on the other side of that line. If it were not an augmented matrix, it would be three by three, right? Three in this direction, three in this direction, and so it would be a square matrix. And that corresponds to there being three equations, and three unknowns, x1, x2, and x3. And in the general case, when you have a matrix, not counting that extra row given, or that extra column given in the case of an augmented matrix, right? When you have a matrix, the number of rows corresponds to the number of equations. And usually that's represented with the letter M. The number of columns, and each column in fact, corresponds to a variable or an unknown. So the number of columns is the number of variables or unknowns. Variables slash unknowns. And usually that's depicted with the letter N. So M, your number of rows or your number of equations, N, your number of columns or your number of variables, and the dimensions of your matrix are referred to as M by N, okay? Again, this is not counting the extra column in an augmented matrix, right? So matrices are often described as having dimensions M by N, M rows and columns, or m equations and n variables, n unknowns. And these numbers do not necessarily have to be equal to each other. So for example, okay, consider the following system of equations. 3x plus 3y equals 3, x plus 2y equals 4, and x plus 3y equals two. You have two unknowns, x and y, and three equations. Okay, so in this case, m equals three, three rows, n equals two, two columns, not counting the extra column in the case of it being an augmented matrix, right? So we may call this an m by n plus 1 matrix if it's an augmented matrix with that extra column there. So for example, this is what it would look like.
Okay, so notice the part that's not augmented is three by two, right? Three rows, two columns. And we can bring this matrix to row echelon form the same way as we would work with any other matrix. So here we'll do row one divided by three, and that gives us one, one, one on top. The other rows stay are the same. And our last step here, we're actually gonna do two steps in one. We're gonna row two minus row one, and row three minus row one. So row one stays the same. Row two, we're just subtracting row one. We're gonna get zero. Two minus one is one, and four minus one is three. And row three minus row one, one minus one is zero, three minus one is two, and two minus one is one. Okay, so we're almost in row echelon form. Let's take one more step to get a zero right here, right? So that this pivot position here, so that this leading one has zeros below it, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do row three minus two row two. And here's what happens, okay? The top row is the same, then we have zero, one, three, and then, let me just fix that one there. Zero minus two times zero is zero. Two minus two times one, that's two minus two, it's also zero. One minus, oh, sorry, that's supposed to be a two, actually. Two minus two times, um, hold on, hold on a sec. Um, so here we, this is supposed to be a one. Ha. Ah. There we go. That is supposed to be a one. Okay. And one minus two times one, one minus two, and that gives us a negative one. So here we have something that's inconsistent, right? If we were to transfer this to equation form, well, the top row says x1 plus x2 equals one. The next row says x2 equals three. And the next row says zero equals negative one. Okay, so, which is of course not true. Zero does not equal negative one. So this system of equations three equations and two unknowns, this system of equations does not have a solution. Or we say it's inconsistent. If a system of equations does not have a solution, it's called inconsistent. Now, here we had more equations than unknowns. We can also have more unknowns than equations, okay? Consider a matrix that looks like this. Three, four, so this is our next example. Three, four, two, one. Six, eight, four, five. Right? So here we have an M by n plus one matrix, right? Because we have our number of equations is two and our number of unknowns is three. Okay, and the plus one here, that's because it's an augmented matrix. If we ignore that column of the answers, then it's a two by three matrix. Two rows, three columns of unknowns. If we were to turn this into an equation or a set of equations, it would look like this. We would have 3x1 plus 4x2 plus 2x3 equals 1, 6x1 plus 8x2 plus 4x3 equals 
five. Two equations, that's our M, three unknowns, that is our N, okay? Now, if we were to solve this, okay, let's do as our first step, row two minus two row one and see what we get. So the top stays the same. And the bottom, six minus two times three is six minus six, zero. Eight minus two times four, eight minus eight, zero. Four minus two times two, four minus four, zero. Five minus two times one, five minus two is three. So what does that tell us? Well, the top tells us three x one plus four x two plus two x three equals one. Okay, which is the same thing that it says right there, right? We didn't touch that top row. And the bottom row tells us that zero equals three, which of course is not true, okay? Which tells us that this system of equations is inconsistent. There is no way to solve both of these equations at once. And if you look here, this equation here, all of the numbers multiplying an unknown are just twice the number multiplying an unknown in equation one, right? But when you look at the answer, five is not twice as much as one, right? So you may have been able to see from the start that all this system of equations does not have any solution, right? So we can have more equations than unknowns and have no solution. We can have more unknowns than equations and have no solution. Other combinations too. Consider another example where we have 3x plus 3y equals 3, x plus 2y equals 4, and 2x plus 4y equals 8. Okay, bring it into matrix form. Okay, so here we have three equations, two unknowns, right? And what is it congruent to? Okay, well, let's do row one divided by three. And let's do two steps at once again. Okay, so let's do row two minus row one, and let's do row three minus two row one. So the top is the same. Here we have one minus one is zero, two minus one is one, four minus one is three, and here we have two minus one times two, two minus two is zero, four minus one times two, four minus two is two, and eight minus one times two, eight minus two is six. All right, and now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do row three minus two row two. So the top is the same, next line is the same, and the bottom line, zero minus zero is zero, two minus two times one, two minus two is zero, six minus two times three, six minus six is also zero, okay? So we have x1 plus x2 equals one, and we have x2 equals three. And then the bottom line just says zero equals zero. Okay, well, there's one solution to this system of equations. Okay, we have x2 equals three. We know that, so x1 plus three equals one, x1 equals one minus three, which is negative two. So we found a unique solution, okay?
Now consider another example. Okay. So this is example four. Okay. Similar matrix. Three, three, three. One, 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 and negative one, negative one, negative one. Okay? So again, we have three equations, we have two unknowns, and let's solve this. Okay, first thing we'll do, row one divided by three, which gives us one, one, one on top. Next row stays one, one, one as well. And next row, negative one, negative one, negative one. Maybe you see where this is going. Row two minus row one, row three plus row one. One, one, one on top. Then we have zero, 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 zero. So, we have infinitely many solutions. Okay. The information we're given here is that x1 plus x2 equals 1 and 0 equals 0. Oh, and 0 equals 0 again. Just same information. Right? So what we do in this situation, if you recall from when we work with matrices where m equals n, same number of equations as unknowns, we set x2 equal to some parameter let's call it s and so x1 equals 1 minus s right and where that comes from by the way is x1 plus s instead of x1 plus x2 x1 plus s equals 1 just rearrange that and so we have our solution and we can write it in parametric form where our vector x1 and x2 equals 0, sorry, uh, 1, 0, plus negative 1, 1 multiplied by s. Okay, so x2 is equal to 0 plus 1s, right? Because x2 is just equal to s. And x1 is equal to 1 minus s, right? Because that's what it equals, 1 minus s, right? This is the parametric form of the solution. And if you plug in any value for s, you will get one of infinitely many solutions for this system of equations, okay? One of infinitely many solutions for this pair, x1 and x2. Now let's do one more example here. Now let me just switch colors here. Okay, so our last example is going to be, again, where we have more unknowns than equations. So consider this matrix. 3, 4, 2, and the solution being 1. And then next row is 6, 8, 4, and 2. All right? So we're going to do row 2 minus 2 row 1. And we get, well, the top is the same. And the next. Well, 6 minus 2 times 3, 6 minus 6 is 0. 8 minus 2 times 4, 8 minus 8 is 0. 4 minus 2 times 2, 4 minus 4 is 0. 2 minus 2 times 1, 2 minus 1 is 0. Okay, so what this tells us then, we have 3x1 plus 4x2 plus 2x3 equals 1 and 0 equals 0. Okay, so we'll need a parameter for x3. We'll say x3 equals s. 
we'll also need a parameter for x2. Okay, x2 equals t. And now we can write 3x1 plus 4t plus 2s equals 1. Rearranging that gives us 3x1 equals 1 minus 4t minus 2s or x1 equals 1 over 3 minus 4 thirds t minus 2 thirds s. And then if we recall again, x2 equals t and x3 equals s. That is our parametric solution if we write it in vector form okay. x1 x2 x3 okay as a vector that is going to be equal to one third zero zero plus t multiplied by negative 4 over 3, 1 and 0, plus s multiplied by negative 2 over 3, 0 and 1. Okay. So to read this, x1 equals 1 third plus negative 4 thirds t plus negative 2 thirds s x2 equals 0 plus 1t and no s's and x3 equals well, that's supposed to be a 0 not a backward 6 let me just fix that okay so x3 equals 0 plus 0t zero plus 1x right x3 just equals s that's how we write that in vector form okay and so again we have infinitely many solutions here okay so non-square matrices ignoring the augmented extra column right where you don't have the same number of rows and columns you can still get in different situations one solution or no solutions at all or infinitely many solutions okay now you'll notice for the case where we had more unknowns than equations okay where we had m equal to 2 and n equal to 3 in neither of these cases did we have a unique solution okay we either had no solution or we had infinitely many solutions okay so in this case here we have infinitely many solutions right you plug in any value for t or s and you'll get one of the infinitely many solutions for x1 x2 and x3 and for an example we did above we have no solutions at all okay that's right here where we got zero equals three our two equations were were inconsistent, no solution, okay? Now, we're gonna get into a special case, a special set of equations called homogeneous systems, okay? So a homogeneous system of equations a homogeneous system of equations is a system where the constant number that that uh, doesn't multiply a variable is equal to zero right so it's a system where every equation is of the form some number times x1 plus some other number times x2 plus whatever number times x3 and so on up to your very last unknown x n because there is n unknowns and that equals zero okay if every equation is of this form you have a homogeneous system of equations so for example here's a homogeneous system 3x plus 2y 
minus z equals 0. Okay. 5x plus 2y minus 2z equals 0. And 7x plus 2y minus z equals 0. Okay, so here we have three equations and three unknowns. M equals three, three equations, three rows. N equals three, three unknowns, three columns. And the constant number is zeros all around. Okay, so if we were to put this in matrix form, three, two, negative one, five, two, negative two, seven, two, negative one, and here it's all zeros, okay? And when it comes to homogeneous equations, there's always one solution, which will always work, at least one solution. And that solution is everything equals zero, okay? X equals zero, Y equals zero, Z equals zero, okay? If all your unknowns are equal to zero, well, then your entire equation is equal to zero, which is what we want. Right, so this solution, which is called the trivial solution, okay, it will always work for a homogeneous system, right? Because a homogeneous system says, here's all your variables multiplied by certain numbers, and adding them all up equals zero. Okay, well, if all your variables are equal to zero, it doesn't matter what you're multiplying them by, the result is going to be zero, right? So a homogeneous system always has the trivial solution which is a solution where all numbers are equal to zero. And if you're working with an augmented matrix where this last row here is all zeros, well, that row is always gonna stay zeros, okay? Because as you do row operations and you add and subtract the value in one row from a multiple of the value in the other row, you're always adding and subtracting zeros. So that row is always going to be zeros. And so these equations are often written without that final column. Because what's the point? It's all going to be zeros anyways, okay? So that is a homogeneous system of equations. Now, it's not necessary that the trivial solution where everything equals zero is the only solution. There could be non-trivial solutions as well, okay? And here we're gonna get into something called the rank of a matrix. The rank of a matrix is the number of leading ones when the matrix is in row echelon form. Okay, so for example, let's say you have a matrix that looks like this. Okay, one, three, negative two, zero, one, one, and zero, zero, one. Okay, so this matrix is in row echelon form. The number of leading ones is three. One, two, three. So the rank is three. We use R for rank, the rank equals three. The number of columns, which is also the number of unknowns, is also three. So in this case, our rank equals our number of columns. And what that implies for the case of a homogeneous system is that we have only the trivial solution. Okay? There's only one solution that's possible. And if you imagine it, if we put in those extra, that extra column, right? We have one, three, negative two, zero, zero, one, one, zero, 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 one, zero. Well, what does that bottom row tell us? That bottom row tells us x3 equals zero. Okay, what does the top row tell us? x2 plus x3 equals zero, but we already know that x3 equals zero. So this is just telling us that x2 plus zero equals zero. Well, that means x2 equals zero as well. Okay, and what does the top row tell us? We have, that's supposed to be a one by the way. We have x1 plus three x2 
minus 2x3 equals 0. Okay, but we already know x3 equals 0, and we know that x2 equals 0, so that top row just tells us x1 equals 0, right? And it doesn't matter what the numbers are that we're multiplying our variables by, okay? A 3, a negative 2, a 1 here, or anything else, it doesn't matter, okay? The only solution that exists is the trivial solution. If our rank is equal to our number of columns, our number of unknowns, in a homogeneous system. If it's not a homogeneous system, okay, well then, Then, then it's not necessarily that it, the trivial solution exists, right? So let's say two, three, and one. Okay, well, here we have x3 equals one, right? x3 does not equal zero, right? So we have a unique solution here, but it's not, it's not a homogeneous system. That, that's okay, we, we still have a unique solution, right? As long as we have a solution, all right? Now, there could be situations where our rank is actually less than our number of columns, okay? So what that means is that not every column has a leading number in row echelon form. So for example, let's say three, two, negative one, and zero, two, five, and zero, four, ten. Okay, so we can do row three minus two row two, and what that gives us is three, two, negative one, zero, two, five, zero, 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 right? Four minus two times two, four minus four is zero, ten minus two times five, ten minus ten is zero. Okay, so Let's do row one over three, row two over two. We get one, two thirds, negative one over three, zero, one, and five over two, and zero, zero, zero. Okay, so there's our row echelon form. We have two leading ones which means that our rank is equal to two. R equals two. Our number of columns, which is our number of unknowns, is three. So our rank is actually less than our number of columns, which means we have parameters, okay? And a parameter means a free variable, right? It means we have a variable which we can set equal to anything. So in this case, we might say, x3 equals s, and then x2 plus 5 over 2 s equals 0, and x1 plus 2 over 3 x2 minus 1 over 3 x3 equals 0. Okay, and why do we have x3 equals s? Well, because what that bottom row tells us, if you remember, if this was an augmented matrix, we'd have that vertical line with the three zeros. We actually have zero equals zero in that bottom row, right? So x3 can be anything. We set it equal to a parameter, right? And rearranging everything in parametric form, x2 equals negative 5 over 2s, right? And x1 equals 1 over 3x3 3 minus 2 over 3x2. Okay, let's put in the parameters. Instead of x3, we're going to put in s, 1 over 3s. Okay, and instead of 2 over 3x2, we can have 2 over 3 
and instead of x2, we're going to write negative 5 over 2 s. Okay, so that just comes from there. Right? So let's simplify this. Okay, x1 equals 1 over 3s. Here our 2s will cancel out, the negatives will cancel out, plus 5 over 3s equals 6 over 3s equals 2s. Okay, so to summarize, x1 equals 2s, x2 equals negative 5 over 2s, and x3 just equals s. And if we were to write this in vector form, x1, x2, x3 equals, well, we have no numbers that aren't multiplying a parameter, right? So that vector is just the zero vector, plus the numbers multiplying a parameter, two multiplying the vector two, negative five over two, and one, okay? So that first column here of zeros, we're, we're just adding the zero vector, so we don't have to write it, and we can just write this as equals s multiplied by 2, negative 5 over 2, and 1. Okay, so when a solution is in this form, the vectors multiplying a parameter, okay, these are called basic solutions. Okay, so basic solution to this equation is the vector 2, negative 5 over 2, and 1. Okay, if s is equal to 1, then this vector is a solution to the above system of equations. Okay, of course there's infinitely many solutions. You can set s equal to any number and that will also be a solution. So what that tells you is that all of the solutions to the system of equations are multiples of the basic solution. In this case, we only have one basic solution. So if we say our linear combinations of the basic solutions, in this case, that just means multiples of the one and only basic solution that we have, okay? Now, we don't necessarily have to have only one basic solution, okay? We can have two. For example, we can have three, we can have four. Uh, let's consider one of the above examples, okay, where we had two parameters. Let me just scroll up to find that one. I believe it was the fifth one. Yep, yeah, there we go. Okay. So here, our system of equations was, it corresponded to 3, 4, 2, and 6, 8, 4. Let's imagine there was a homogeneous system of equations that looked the same as this, right? So, 3, 4, 2, 6, 8, 4. Okay, we're not writing it as an augmented matrix because it would just be a column of zeros. Okay, so what would this look like? Well, row three, uh, row two minus row one, six minus two times three, six minus six is zero, eight minus two times four, eight minus eight is zero, four minus two times two, four minus four is zero. And let's divide row one by three, and we have one, four over three, two over three, 
and then zero, zero, zero. Okay, so here our number of unknowns was three. Our rank is equal to one. Okay, in row echelon form, we only have one, a single leading one, right? Our rank is equal to one. And so our number of parameters that we will need, which is also the number of free variables, is going to be n minus r, which in this case is three minus one, which is equal to two, okay? So we're gonna set x3 equal to s and x2 equal to t. And so we have x1 equal to four over three t. Uh, sorry, we have x1 plus four over three t plus two over three s, no, hold on, other way around. I'll make that plus a bit cleaner as well. Four over three x2, so four over three t plus two over three s, there we go, equals zero, and when we rearrange that, we have x1 equals negative two over three s minus four over three t. Okay, and of course, x2 equals t, x3 equals s. And if we put that in vector form, we have x1, x2, x3 equals, let's do our s's first, negative two over three, zero, one plus t, negative four over three, one, and zero. So here we have two basic solutions, okay, to the system of equations. One basic solution is negative two over three, zero, and one. This solution corresponds to s being equal to one and t being equal to zero. So this is one of infinitely many solutions to this system of equations, okay? It's one of the basic solutions. Another basic solution is one over four thirds, one and zero, okay? And that corresponds to t being equal to one and s being equal to zero, okay? This is also a solution to the system of linear equations, okay? Now, any other solution to the system of linear equations exists if we set s equal to anything else and t equal to anything else. And what we're doing when we're setting s and t equal to other numbers is we're taking one of the basic solutions and multiplying it by something, right? The something is s and we're adding it to the other basic solution and multiplying it by something and the something is t. Right? That's the equation we have up here. So every single solution to a system of linear equations, it, it, a homogeneous system of linear equations, every single solution is a linear combination of its basic solutions. It's, it's one basic solution multiplied by some number plus the other basic solution multiplied by some number. If you have a third basic solution plus a third basic solution multiplied, by some number and so on. That's called a linear combination. A linear combination of two numbers or two vectors means you're multiplying those numbers by some constant and adding the result. Or you're multiplying those vectors, each vector by some constant and multiplying the result, okay? So for a homogeneous system of equations, every solution is just a linear combination of its basic solutions and the basic solutions are themselves solutions as well so what does that mean geometrically well if there is a trivial solution to a system of equations right trivial solution where x1 
equals zero, x2 equals zero, and so on, all of them up to xn, all of your variables equals zero. Well, that means that the geometric objects that you're considering, they pass, their intersection passes through the origin. Okay, if you imagine you're in three dimensional space, x, y, z, the origin is the point zero, zero, zero. Okay, so if that's a solution to your system of equations, that means the intersection of whatever object you're looking at, lines, planes, it passes through the origin, right? So maybe you have one plane that passes through the origin and another plane that intersects it such that the intersection is going to be a line that passes through the origin, that line itself passes through the origin. Uh, if, if you look at you know, how two planes could actually intersect, okay, consider it looks like this, okay, and let's say the origin, right, so they intersect in a line, there's the line, and if the origin is on that line, well then, the solution to the system of linear equations that represent these planes, that solution will have the trivial solution, but not only the trivial solution. This entire line is a solution, which means it will have a single basic solution, okay? A single vector, which is in the direction of this line. And if you multiply that vector by some number, right, by two, well then you'll end up with this point here instead of this point here. If you multiply it by negative one, you'll end up with this point here and so on. So the different values of your parameter, let's say your vector is one, two, negative one. That's your basic solution. You multiply that by S and we'll talk more about the equation of a line in parametric form later on, right? So from the origin to the coordinate uh, one, two, negative one, let me actually write that coordinate. So X, Y, Z, all right? So our X value is equal to one, our Y value is equal to two, and our Z value is equal to negative one. Okay. So there's that point, and there is the vector from the origin pointing to one, two and negative one. Okay, there's that vector. And if S is equal to one, that's the vector that we have. If S is equal to two, we're going in the same direction, but twice as far. If S is equal to negative one, we're going in the opposite direction. If S is equal to three, well, that's that basic solution times three. And let me just write that basic solution in red here so it's clear where it comes from, right? So if you have one parameter, that is the equation of a line. Okay. If you have two parameters, that is the equation of a plane. Okay, so let's say you have two basic solutions, right? Let me get the, uh, the right color here, okay? x1, x2, and x3 equals 1, 2, negative 1 times s plus, let's say, 1, 1, 1 times t. Okay, so there's one, two, 
and negative one. Okay, and we drew this before. Okay, and one, one, one. Okay, there's one, there's one right here. So that would actually be this point right there. So there's our basic solution that multiplies t, and there's our basic solution that multiplies s. Okay, and between these two vectors, one can create a plane. Okay. So a plane that, well, I mean, it actually goes on forever, right? And so on. I just drew it as a, as a rectangle here. So it's a plane in three-dimensional space, which is defined by these vectors. Any value of s and any value of t will give you a point on this plane. So for example, if, if t equals 1 and s equals 0, you are here. Oops. You are here. Right? If t equals 2 and s equals 0, you're here. If t equals 3 and s equals 0, you're here. If s equals 1 and t equals 0, you're here. If s equals 2 and t equals 0, well, you're twice as far. You'll be here. And if t equals 1 and s equals 1, you'll be there. Right? If t equals 2 and s equals 2, well, then you'll be here. Okay, any linear combination of these two basic vectors will give you a point on the plane, which is also a solution to this system of linear equations, right? And again, we'll talk about the geometry later on. In this particular case, actually, these two equations, which can be written as 3x plus 4y plus 2z equals 0, and... 6x plus 8y plus 4z equals 0. These are actually the equations of two planes that are laying right on top of one another. And that's why their intersection is a plane, right? They intersect everywhere where they touch, right? Which is everywhere where they exist. And this is the basic solutions, right? That, that define this plane because a linear combination of them will give you any point on the plane, okay? And here we are working with homogeneous equations. If we weren't working with homogeneous equations, okay? So let's say we had x1, x2, x3, which I also wrote as x, y, z, right? In three dimensions, x, y, z, right? If that equals some other vector, say a, b, c, plus something else that multiplies a parameter. Okay, so let's say, right, a, t, b, t, c, t, which multiplies t, and then a, s, b, s, c, s, multiplies s. Okay, so for example, x, y, z equals, say, 1, 2, 3, plus 1, negative 1, 2, t, plus 5, negative 1, 0, s. Okay? So, this is not a solution to a homogeneous system because we have these constants here that aren't multiplying any parameter, right? They are not all equal to zero, okay? And what that means in, in this kind of situation where we don't have a homogeneous system, it means that the origin is not where our vectors multiplying the parameters start. So for example, this vector here is our constant vector that's not multiplying a parameter and then from that point on, you have your two vectors that define your plane, okay? So your plane does not actually pass through the origin. If we're dealing with the equation of a line, 
So for example, we have x, y, z equals 1, 0, 1 plus 3, 0, 2, t, for example. Well, then that 1, 0, 1, that's a vector that goes from the origin to some point on the line. And then the vector that's multiplying t is a vector that goes along the line. Okay, so any value for t will give us a different multiple of moving along the line in one or the other direction, depending if t is negative or positive. And that is what is represented here geometrically. Now, the actual geometry of all of it, we're gonna get into that later on. Right now, you just wanna understand what the rank of a matrix is, what a homogeneous system of equations is, what the basic solutions are, and that if you have a homogeneous system of equations with infinitely many solutions, not just a trivial solution, then every solution is just a linear combination of the basic solutions. And if you only have one solution for a homogeneous system of equations, well, that one solution is the trivial solution where everything is equal to zero. And if your rank is equal to your number of unknowns in a homogeneous system, well, then the trivial solution is the only one you have. If your rank is less than your number of unknowns, then the number of unknowns minus your rank is the number of free parameters or the number, uh, the number of free variables or the number of parameters that you will have, the number of basic solutions that you will have, and it means you have an infinite number of solutions in total. So, later on, we will build on top of this even more, and we'll talk about even more matrix operations. So, see you next time.